Green flag your race watching snacks with Mission's mouth watering race day recipes. Try some of our tasty tacos, piled high nachos, fresh chips with guac, and more. So gear up your ride and fuel up those stomachs with delicious Mission foods. Now that's too fast, too tasty. The Road Atlanta Speed Tour returns to Michelin Raceway, Road Atlanta, March 22nd through the 24th. Featuring the Trans Am Series presented by Pirelli, the Sports Car Vintage Racing Association, International GT, Prototype Sprint Series Association, and the Formula Regional Promotion. Saturday, you can take part in the Haggerty Cars and Caffeine Car Show. You do not want to miss the Road Atlanta Speed Tour. Children 12 and under are free. For tickets, simply go to Speed Tour. Welcome back to the Speed Tour. Jonathan Green and Ben Sissel bringing the action and Tony Garcia getting amongst it, underneath it, over it, inside it, you name it. Did I hear Phil Collins in the background when that came live? Yeah. Somebody's playing that. Yeah, it is. Bit of a nice. Cadillac. Now, do not adjust your TV screen, ladies and gentlemen. This is not the 2019 12 Hours of Sebring. That's Yasek Muka racing in our Group 11 SVRA in that beautiful Mustang sampling from the 2019 12 Hours of Sebring. Yeah, but he uses that umbrella just to slow him down. That's a parachute. That thing's fast. Uh oh, we're missing Tom Gladys so far. He should be in second position there. Travis and Higgins is in a complete, now for something completely different. How about that? Yeah, Monty Python. Yeah, but there, the Red Bull helmet looks normal, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. A bit different than the... Uh, so, uh, Tony, if you, if you can hear me, get some shots at the side of the car. Right, right there. See all those names? Down, down below, Tony. Go if you can come. Bring the camera down to the ground. Oh, they're going out. Never mind. There we go. Yeah, Tony, don't get hit by a car. You Sorry gonna, about you that. Gonna, look, he's just come back. He doesn't. I mean, it's bad enough. Give him a, give him a break. There go the Myers out there. So this is Group Five, Seven, and Eleven at the Sebring Speed Tour. Andrea Robertson pulling out there, and uh, just some really cool, eclectic mix of cars, some prototypes. Some of these cars actually did race at the 12 Hours of Sebring just a few years ago yep. in this century. And uh, so I'll go through yep. the uh, grid here real quick. We've got Yasek Muka in that 2019 Mustang sampling Cadillac DPI. Tom Gladys, who isn't out there. Travis Engen. Yeah, it is. I hear One More Night by Phil Collins. You hear that? Is that on the speakers out there? No, it's in your head. Hopefully, it may Do be. the grid. Do the grid. Know. Travis, keep me focused. My, <laughs> med, my meds are wearing out. You are. Travis Engen, 2005 Audi R8 LMP. Aaron Weiss in a Praga R1T. Ralph Lamacchia, one of our fastest drivers, in a Mazda Elan DP02. Louis Schreiber in a Radical SR10. Benjamin Myers, our Group 5, first Group 5, an AS2 and a Carbeer CS2. And his brother, Andrew Myers, went away with three huge cups of trophies last night. 1996 Carbeer Sports 2000. Gary Gray in a Radical SR8. Gulp. I'm not hearing. I'm not imagining that. That's Phil Collins. Gobel Newsom. Gobel Newsom in a Sebaco MP01 Evo. Andrea Robertson in that Ford Doran GT. Beautiful car. Thank you, Andrea, for bringing that back out with us. Dave Kunzelman in a Radical SR3. Michael Schmitz. One more night. Norma M30. And then Don Yount in an Orica Challenge car. Jonathan, we're going to have a good race here. I don't know what a Ford Doran GT is compared to a Ford GT40. I think just Doran was like the, the, the team that built the car. Like um, like a Shelby Mustang instead of a you know a Ford Mustang, okay. I believe, but I could be wrong, and I'm sure our comment section knows exactly, or at least can Google it for us. So you're not the only one. RDC Autosports is also doing Phil Holt Collins in his head. So okay, I hear a sax solo right now. You hear it? That's the barely. Sax solo. But I think you've got the Unity on as well. So I just don't worry. He's playing all his hits. He's here. Now, it wouldn't be odd to see uh, the lead singer of ACDC, Brian Johnson, out racing. No. Nope. Or uh, the Nick Mason from Pink Floyd. Or even um, Mr. B. Yeah. Alice Cooper. Yeah, he races. Uh, what's his name? A podcast. Uh, uh, Adam Carolla. Adam Carolla. Yeah. We're talking about a car that he owns now at uh, Phyllis. Yeah. 
So what's your favorite Phil Collins or Genesis song? We're just going to put out all the hits today. Okay. Uh, well, you know, you can't be in the air tonight. You know, that's yeah. drum solo. You've got to love it. Um, I'm not a Susu Studio fan. No, nah, no. Nah. Fantastic in concert, though. Did you know, here's a bit of trivia, did you know that Phil Collins owns, owns most of the items in the Alamo? I think he's since sold them off. Huh. But uh, if you go to the Alamo and you go and see some of the famous swords and some of the memorabilia they have there, um, he is a long-time aficionado of all wow. things Alamo and has put a lot of his money into them. That's, I know. <laughs> Which How I, random is that? I totally random. Yeah. A guy from England, um, you know, investing in a place in San Antonio. A famous place, mind you. Ginetta, talking of a famous place in England. Uh, Ginetta, the lights are off on the pace car, which means the Cadillac and the Audi Ooh, will go head to Look at to this head. front row. What a front this row. This is amazing. Like, seriously, don't adjust your TV screens because you would think this might be the 12 hours of Sebring. Yeah, with, with sunshine. Here we go. And these two are going to go, Who do you, who's your money on in this one? Because No, Yasek's the aggressive one. Okay. Travis will wait for his tires to warm up and make good decisions, and uh, Yasek goes for it. Here we go, then. Let's see if you're right. Green flag waves. Away they go. Yasek Muka on the right-hand side. Travis Engin does slot into second place, as you guessed it would be the case. Engin will wait to get his tires up to speed. That's a beautiful-looking Cadillac. You said Ford Cadillac. You sample Ford. Mustang sampling. I see. Yeah, that was the sponsor back then. I think that is that a Wayne Taylor? I, no, Cadillac? that's not Wayne Taylor. Is, who is who was the who was the team with that? Well, Max Angelelli was the guy that developed the Cadillac originally for IMSA. But uh, but you're right, Wayne. I mean, so many of them. But 219. No, that's a long okay. time. Okay. Now look at this uh, radical. Now look at look at the legs on that Audi just pulling away, coming right down to Yasek Muka. It does take about a lap for that Audi's tires to come to temperature, I believe. Third place is Aaron Weiss in the Praga R11. Cool looking car. Like yeah. the lines of that car are just beautiful. But basically, the first three cars in this group are reverse airplanes. They're basically made to keep these cars on the ground. Yeah, and in fact, the Audi in the middle, the all gray and uh, the touches of ray, uh, red, is the most successful Audi racing car of all time. Isn't that cool that it's here with us? And will be with us probably four or five t more times this season. So it's so cool to see that car. And especially sometimes in the paddock, you can go to GMT and they've got all the clothes off of the car. And you can see yeah. the engineering inside it. It is, it is unbelievable to see the insides of that car. And they've made it easier and easier to settle with. Uh, they used to be have literally technicians from Audi to be able to get started and work it and all the rest of it. But they've made it a lot easier now. But this top four, look at them. Really close together as they come out of 16 and down the Almond Straight. Linus okay. turn, here comes the Audi. Yeah, but yeah, the Audi and the uh, Cadillac are pretty equally yoked at this point. Maybe Travis is turning it on. Look at that. Ah, uh, we've got some aficionados. Oh, man. All right, so give us your um, your historic Sebring 12 Hours announcing voice. Remember those from those films of the 50s and 60s? And here they are, the American yeah. classic here at Sebring. And it's good to see Bill McLaren and Bruce McLaren together on track. Brian Redmond is also in this one. He's in a Ferrari. That's amazing. I wish I had that talent. <laughs> it was Travis Engen in the Mission Foods turn one. But there it is, that number 72. Such a cool Aaron Weiss, a Praga R1T. Beautiful lines on that car, but that Radical went up ahead of him. Yeah, we just had Erwin Grevin saying Thomas Eng was one of the uh, drivers in that car. I think that does. Um, Beloff was another one. Bela. Uh, we're talking about the Audi. Travis went wide. Uh, sorry, the Cadillac you were talking about. And I was talking about who drove the Audi as well. But there's nothing between the top three. Really impressive so far. Jim Booth at the wheel of that Radical. It's good to see the Nat Radical, uh, the nimble Radical just keeping up. I mean, he's got plenty of grunt anyway, but so nimble in the quick corners. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a short wheelbase, uh, narrow car. Lots of fun to see. We have this PSSA group that races radicals and revolutions. And until you see those two cars side by side, they look pretty similar. Mm. But uh, the revolutions are quite a bit wider, yeah. have, a, have a, a little bit wider track. But uh, really fun to see those cars on track. And we'll have our first PSSA race next weekend at Thunder Hill. That's right. There's the 30 of Michael Schmitz in a Norma M30. Group 11 car. 
I have not heard of the Norman. My mother's name is Norman. She doesn't know she's a racing really? car. Really? Yeah. She drives like a racing driver, but she didn't know she's named after a racing car. All right. Now somebody's playing smooth hits in there. Do you hear that? No. You're imagining things. I might be. Uh, there's, there's people in It's really hands. sad, though, because I feel Do like you it, I could imagine better than Kenny G. There you go. There's that Mustang sampling. I'm going to snap back to it. Yasek Muka over Travis Engen. But Travis Engen really giving him the grunt here going into 17. And here comes Michael Schmitz might be up there with these two in that Norma M30. So he started at the back, but really moving his way up to the front. Still haven't got a glimpse of Andrea Robertson on track yet. She's in 10th position in that uh, Ford Doran GT. Here come the leaders. Another lap completed. The clock ticking down. Seven of Ralph Lamacia and that Master Alam DPO2. Yeah. So Wolf Motorsports and Ralph, they hang out a lot. And actually, I got to go to so just outside of Road America, uh, Wolf built these uh, like basically condos with big garages that you can build out. You can make like a clubhouse or a bedroom. So when you come to uh, Road America, and Tom Limkuhl, our uh, former grid chief, took me over there. And he's just got a really neat place with a lot of really cool, like, Ferrari memorabilia. And uh, he and Tom would, would pair up and uh, do a lot of co-driving together. So Ralph Lamacchia here. James French is his, uh, his coach and co-driver. So it's cool to see those two uh, come all the way up from Wisconsin down here to race with us at Sebring. Yeah, trying to get away from the cold and get some sunshine in you. So Myers and Myers, 7th and 8th. They had a good battle yesterday, too. So Steve Keyline, this is a great comment. Love seeing the racing cars from the days when the drivers were fat and the tires were skinny. <laughs> yeah. It's the opposite these days. Can be. Yeah, Yasek Muka did a 2034, and he's got a, well, he's got a good gap over Travis Engen, but it's still a good battle. Now we go back uh -oh. to this battle here. This is the Maya battle. The, the battle of brotherly love. Yep, Benjamin and Andrew. So Benjamin last night might have gotten a little bit green with envy, seeing his uh, brother collecting all those cup trophies. So he's just ahead of him as they go through Bennett Bridge Hall Bishop's Bend. So that would be Benjamin going through Bennett's Bridge Hall Bishop's yeah, Bend. exactly. Wait till we have Benny Bish out there. Benny Bish. That's right. He's up next. Group 10. Look at that, though. Andrew's getting behind him now. The slipstream, the drag can be a big coefficient here. Look at that. Is he closing the gap? I can't tell. It looks like they are dead even. Yeah, it looks dead like even. Like they have a, the a stick between them, and they're just connected. Good racing, though, and I think they're enjoying the fact that they've got plenty of room to race each other, but Ooh. they're very similar to Yoke, as you quite rightly. There's the Andrea Robertson with the lights blazing on that uh, Ford Doran GT. Beautiful. I went and had a closer look at that. It is absolutely gorgeous. Have we gotten an answer? Here we go. Oh. Now, Travis has got his uh, glue together and stuck one ahead of Luca and takes the lead. So Engen, for the first time, leads this race. In the Audi R8. Uh-oh. Ladies and gentlemen, strap in. We're going to have to stay with the leaders. I think we've gone through the whole grid because we're going to have to stay with the leaders. Something amazing is about to happen. Travis Engen in his 2005 Audi R8 LMP versus Yasek Muka in a 2019 Cadillac DPI. This is about to get good at Sebring. Two cars with huge history here at the 12 Hours of Sebring. Who do, you, who do you have the advantage to? Who do you get the advantage to, Jonathan? Well, just the, what you said was so interesting. 2005 versus 2019, that should not be a match, but it just shows you uh, the quality of that Audi and also yep. Travis Engen's uh, ability at the wheel. But uh, Muka should have the advantage, and he's right there behind him as they come through 15A and head towards 16. But you never know, like what kind of restrictions were put on cars Correct. in that 14-year difference. But, yeah, uh, Travis, a little bit less drag than, yep. you know, with that open cockpit car over that Mustang sampling. But you can see Yasek kind of looking around. He's like, doesn't have the draft yet. Yasek and Travis have raced together many times, so they know each other really well. But let's see what happens here. All right. And Look at those bumps. Yeah, out of the Mission Foods. Sunset corner. And there's going to be another lap before the white flag for at least, and that means that Yasak Muka, as they dive into one, has still got a very good chance of winning this race. Yeah. He's taking the wide line, short apex corner. Travis taking the defensive line. 
both on the brakes at the same time, but Yasek was just a little bit behind Travis. So Travis later on the brakes there. And they come out oh, very smooth indeed. Th three, four, five now down under the bridge. Look at the look at that gap now that Travis is getting. Yeah, he's getting some good. Think, uh, uh, using the grunt of the Audi there for sure. Yasek's going to have to be a little bit later on the race, but man, he used all the track there. He almost came out tracked out wide right just seems like the cadillac under braking and a more modern car just really dives closer and closer under heavy braking especially at the cube three hairpin there in turn yeah. seven gary gray and then number 34 2013 radical sr8 i wish i knew and i should know i'll know by next weekend what the difference between an sr10 and an sr8 is but hopefully our comment section does it does seem like yesterday that those Audis were new, and I have a few slot cars of those Audis, but look at this. Andrea Robertson, another car that uh, raced the 24 hours, that very car raced the 24 hours of Le Mans. She podiumed that, didn't she? Yes, yeah. She and her husband, what a cool story that yeah. is. Love the new bridge that Sebring's put in the last five or six years there, that Corvette bridge going into Green Park. Just every year we come back here, there's new improvements that the staff is making to the track. You don't want to mess with it too much. Yeah, they're not really changing that. They're changing like the infrastructure and the things for the spectators, but the track is staying the same. Yeah, if they, if they came here and repaved and smoothed out the track, I think the whole motorsports, uh, anybody in motorsports would revolt against it. Mm. I believe this is Dave Kunzelman. With that SR3. Another with radical. The Momo Ferrari livery on it. Love that. Yeah, you gotta love that. Kind of on his own though at the back. You know, yeah. The place. But we've gone through. Let's let's try to, if you guys don't mind, you guys want to see the leaders. Let's try to go back to those leaders with Travis Engen and Yasek Muka because I think it might come down go. to there we go. I love it. Look at that as they come through Cube 3 turn seven what are you seeing jonathan well i'm seeing like i said the cadillac go very close there that's about the closest he comes and then he stays with him down the fangio but watch this well next time we get a drone shot you'll watch yeah. the audi will start to just pull away slightly see and then by the time they come into tower well, yeah, uh, six out break, him. yeah he's out breaking him every time tower again very close so it, what he needs to do if he wants to make the approach and make the get over the slipstream he needs to uh, tuck himself up at 16, get through uh, Venice Bridge Hall, uh, Bishop's Bend, and then 15, 15A, 16, then tuck himself right there at 16 under braking. Now, at this point here, if we get it, watch this angle. See how close he gets in this right-hander and exiting from that. And if he is close enough, then he might have a chance down the Almond Straight. Here we go. That's what I'm talking about. Look, close as he's been, right? Yep. But watch the Audi now. Now, if, if Yasa can tuck in on Travis, Travis will give him the corner. But he's got to be right there. And this is where the Audi has the advantage in a straight line. See, he's just not close enough to make a move. But he is taking a faster line through there. Let's see what he can do see here. See if he can go under at the exit. Well, Almost. Nice Look and at close. That. It's nice and close. It it's is. Still time. And I don't see a white flag. Not yet. Ooh, this could shape up to be pretty good. So if you're in the comments, who's who's taking this thing, the Cadillac or the Audi? Well, he's got time. We've got a few laps left, actually. So uh, he's just going to bide his time. He just needs to get closer and closer, take it. At the exit. Almost. Well, nice Look and at close. That. It's nice and close. It it's is. still time. And I don't see a white flag. Not yet. Ooh, this could shape up to be pretty good. So if you're in the comments, who's who's taking this thing, the Cadillac or the Audi? Well, he's got time. We've got a few laps left, actually. So uh, he's just going to bide his time. He just needs to get closer and closer, take increments each and every uh, corner and lap. Uh, so MAK450 is like he's still salty over Pike's Peak being completely paved, to be honest. Yeah, it's not fair because now how do you compare yourself to the times Bobby Unser did in the dirt and hanging out well, like crazy to the asphalt, no, you know? You can't. You can't. Changed it dramatically. Look at this. This is where he gets very close indeed, but he needs to be closer. Uh, because that's the obvious place to overtake. I think it'll be hard for Travis to come back at him if he does get past him. Man, that Cadillac rotates quickly. I've never seen that. Okay, let's see where he goes through here. Through Collier. 
And now, under braking, mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's kind of holding off a bit. He's gone deeper than that. In the I wonder if the arrow wash getting right behind one of those cars is yeah. a problem. Well, I don't know. Might be. We haven't really seen anybody, uh, you know, going up against Travis in a while. No, they're both coming up on. Some lap man. Yeah, that's uh, Kudis man again in 11th. They're both past him. Oh, no, one uh -oh. of them is. Ah, he might yeah. get held and up. A little, a little bit of a pick here. Yeah, Travis is going to get gain a lot here. Yeah. Look at this. Ooh, this is advantage, Travis. That is so 12 hours of Sebring. What yeah. we just saw there. That's just what all the prototypes and he's still up front not. He's still not past to. him fully. Yeah. Oh, that's a huge advantage. Remember last time we saw this shot, he was tucked in right behind him. And now Travis has got about four or five car lengths on him now. And I think that's all he's going to need in the closing stages of this one. Nicely done by Travis. That's good, skillful, clever driving. I don't see the start tower, like, scrambling to find their white flag, so we're going again. I think they're, I think they're having a discussion. Maybe they forgot this isn't the 12 hour. Maybe. So the gap has increased dramatically now. It's over three and a half seconds. So all the good work that uh, Muka had done has come to naught because Travis Eddington, as you can see, is gone. He's already through three. And now Muka breaking, just coming into the entry of three. So he's broken the back of this, has uh, Engen. Isn't it interesting to see all the different racing surfaces here? So now he's on that patch. Then he comes out. So just th those little bit of changes, you know. And the right weather can kind of mess you up oh, yeah. because it's just different grip levels, different adhesion. Then now he comes to a concrete part of the Cube 3 Turn 7 hairpin. This is third place. This is the 63 of Jim Booth. Been a quiet race for him, but uh, he's pedaling away nicely. Out of Cube 3 and down the Fangio straight. If, I don't, if I'm not mistaken, I thought Jim Booth used to drive a white uh, Radical with us last year. Maybe he's got maybe a new he's, car well, for the, him. Well, uh, the SR10 is probably one of the most modern Radicals, so maybe yeah. he's upgraded to a more modern Radical. Uh, yeah. There's La Bamba Racing down there. I see the La Bamba Racing machine. Happy to have them here. Thanks for joining us. And there's Jim Booth. You can see that halo. See their kind of interpretation of the yeah. halo there. That's a, that's a smart idea. Yeah, it is. Works well as we saw with Grosjean a few years ago. Oh, yeah. See, they've added asphalt right there coming into, what is that, 15, mm -hmm. 14, 15, 16. Yeah, so that's turn 14. That wasn't there, I think, last year. Well, it's going to be a safe first place, uh, third place, excuse me, for Booth. The battle rages on between Engin and Muka, but Muka's kind of lost out. The gap now, three and a half, if not more, at the end of this lap. Winding down. This is our Group 5A, 7, 11, and their second race of the weekend. I want to see this Praga, the black car behind this red car. I want to see the, the lines of that. It's just a really cool looking car. Look at that. It looks like Spacey, 20 isn't it? years in the future. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It's actually fourth place at the moment. That's the 72 of Aaron or Vice uh, on the Praga. Man, that looks rough. I do like that. Good looking car. But low to the ground. Respect the bumps. That's yeah, Sebring's okay. tagline. Yeah. Well, he's having fun, that's for sure. Fourth place overall and already getting into traffic as he dives out of turn one. Back to Boo. Something's, something's hanging on the bottom of his car. You see that? Yep. Just behind the right front wheel, uh, probably just a little piece of, uh, what do you call that, the body that keeps it a flat uh, underneath. Something's come loose there, and there's our leader. The but tray, the, the, yeah. the gap has dropped. Yeah. It was three and a half. Well, Engin doing a good job of controlling this race, but, uh, yeah, we'll keep an eye on the gap. It's 2.8 now. Look there, you can see it now for yourself. So it's come down a little bit, so he's replied well, has uh, Muka. So Mac 450 says his money is on the Audi, but he's rooting for the Caddy. Well, bit the battle of the Myers is over, that's for sure. And it looks as though Benjamin's easily won that. Andrew a long way back now. Look, 
Yeah, wonder what happened. Meanwhile, the leader's coming through. Angin on his way. Looks like, a, so the person at the flag stand looks like he's ready yeah, to throw something. He's ready to throw, well, he's ready. It's a flag of surrender for Muka. <laughs> it's actually a white flag to say, last lap, because Muka is a long way behind. There you see the gap. Yep. Muka some 5.1 seconds. That's why I say he's surrendering, because it was down to just under three, but now it's gone back up to five. So. You know, what's so interesting well. about endurance racing that we've seen in the years past, you know, you look at the record books, 12 hours of Sebring back from the 60s, sometimes it was, you know, 60 lap difference between the leader and stuff like that. But man, the last couple of 12 hours of Sebring, last couple of 24 hours of Daytona have yeah. come down to the last lap with the cars inside of each other. I know, endurance racing has changed dramatically over the years. And they've got it down to an absolute T now. So last lap into the hairpin for the last time for Travis Engin and that famous Audi R8 LMP. Everybody else taking the white flag. I've spoken to Travis because sometimes he'll race four cars in a weekend with us. And it, uh, I've, I've never really done that, you know. I've never gotten from one car to the other race car. And he said, no, it, every, all of them feel a little bit different so he knows exactly what car he's in. He never thinks in that Lotus 23, that I've got the downforce to go into this turn as I do. You know, he yeah, just yeah. kind of repositions, reprograms his brain. I'm in the Audi. This is what this car can do. Well, I think because the cars are so different, that actually helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. So the battle between Engen and Muka coming to a close now as we look at the last part of the track from high above here at Sebring. And Travis putting on a good show. And here he comes down the Almond straight for the last time. Now, I wonder, I'd love to get a, a record or a readout on just how many races, just by fact, this, not big, big super Le Mans races, but just how many races this car has won. Because it's been oh, run, running around in historics. Yeah. And oh, winning yeah. constantly. Yeah, and he doesn't just race with us. He's doing all kinds of different oh, yeah. historic events. Oh, yeah. I've seen him all over the USA. Check the flag then for Travis Engen, who wins once again in that Audi R8. Acknowledges the checkered flag. Thank you, Travis. In a moment. Yasek, Mook Chart, there he is. Mooka comes across the line to take second in the Cadillac. That was a cool race. That was fun to watch. And, and Rob and Alex told me a couple weeks ago that we do have a lot of Group 11 cars here coming here, and they were right. It really uh, paid off. All right, well, as we pull just away from Sebring for a moment, we'll take a short break. We'll be back with more action from SVRA here at the Speed Tour in Sebring. Okay, so pretend this is your race car. It's on the trailer, and you have an accident. Ouch! At least your truck's insurance will pay for another one? Yeah, not so fast. Standard insurance won't replace your race car, whether it's in the trailer, in the paddock, in the garage, or the repair shop. But at Haggerty, we can protect it for what it's really worth any time it's off the track. No matter what or where you race, offer less than a set of race tires. Haggerty, let's drive together. Taking on the challenge, moving ahead. It's about going further, faster. At Customers Bank, we know that great things happen when you combine the best of technology with a deeply human touch. So we offer a wide range of personal, small business, and commercial banking solutions with outstanding personal service, giving you the edge you need to take on tomorrow. Ben. ben says they've given a five on the race guys, so he's going to have to do a five. Will Ernie race on this one? 